Here we go again. Welcome to this week's episode of Over the Target Live. I am your host, Lee Smith. We have a really fantastic and interesting, super interesting show tonight. We're discussing um, with cultural critic, great writer, great cultural critic, deep understanding of, uh, of American culture and what's going on right now throughout the culture with, uh, with colleague and also friend Amina Milanic. So let's go. Amina, welcome to Over the Target Live, and thank you so much for being here this Thursday night. Thank you so much, Lee. I'm really, really happy to be here with you. Yeah. Well, look, well, one of the things, uh, one of the things that, uh, that you and I have spoken about for a while is we've spoken about uh, what, what it looks like to Americans right now, not talking about politics, but what it looks like visually, what the optics look like. And you're someone who's written about this so well, whether we're talking about um, masking, uh, whether we're talking about mm -hmm. the various protests on behalf of on behalf of bizarre figures and these extremely violent protests, which again we saw erupt uh, erupt again this week with the leak of the um, decision, Supreme Court, Court decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. But I just want to step back and look at it. Let's imagine that um, let's imagine that we don't know the United States. Let's imagine that we've never even been to the planet Earth. If you were to look around. <laughs> And you were to have those sorts of sensibilities when you looked at around at the United States and you saw children being masked. What are the kinds of things that would run through your mind about what's happening in this uh, particular part of the world? Yeah, well, you know, what's been really interesting and really bad, really, to watch for the last two years, certainly since uh, COVID or COVIDian ideology really started, because uh, that's really what it is, is this pervasiveness of uh, of joylessness. I think that's that's right. what I see. Now, I think that in many ways, leftism, um, certainly the current strain of it, you know, this isn't really progressivism that maybe right. we were used to before, uh, but this kind of strain of, of left, leftism, and I, and I don't even want to call it progressivism because I'm not really sure if it's progressing right. towards anything apart from, apart from destruction. Um, it's it's marked, I think, by this anti-life or anti-pleasure or anti anti-joy. It's a kind of anti-joy right. movement, um, and we have certainly seen this in masking, which I think from the get-go, almost from the beginning, was a way to have people submit. Um, right. And uh, but especially, of course, with masking of, of children, which is the ultimate right. attack on the on the innocence. Um, right. So, so it's it, not just. Can I, go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, go I'm ahead. just going to ask if, if this is right. We talk about it as a the war on joy, or you know, and and, and um, we're reminded, of course, in the Declaration of Independence, talking about the uh, inalienable rights, right. Mm -hmm. Uh, which include not just life and liberty, of course, but the pursuit of happiness. So this is actually a, a way, an attack on the foundations of, of, of the United States. My question is, is this intentional or are these people just so far stuck in their heads and they're so far stuck within blue bubbles that they don't know what it looks like? They don't know what it they don't know what it means or are they doing it on purpose? Mm -hmm. I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, I think some people really are caught up in the mob mentality um, because that's really what we're seeing, whether it's online um, or I mean, whether it's in the embodied world too. People are just following what others are doing. Um, but I would definitely uh, connect it to the globalist ideology without a doubt huh. because, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with globalism in a sense that it's here. I mean, we are connected as, as, yeah. as much as possible, you know. Right. Um, but the globalist ideology, which I'm sure, you know, everyone knows, it really seeks to destroy the sovereignty, not only of the nation, hmm. but more importantly, I think the sovereignty of the self. And, huh. um, and this is a bigger problem, actually, I'm seeing. I mean, uh, we can all kind of picture the political... Um, the political definitions of, of sovereignty, but what happens when the sovereignty of the individual is then attacked, which I, I see that as happening as well. So in any case, to go back to what I'm saying is that it's, yeah. it is a globalist in a sense that it's creating this kind of sameness 
And globalist ideology mm. has been creating that where there are no differences among people, except differences perhaps that, that yeah. matter ideologically. But those shift too, right? That's the thing. Right. Those, those kinds of things that are useful for ideology are always shifting as we see that now as well, I think. No, th th this this is very interesting. Is right because the uh, the idea of political sovereignty we talk about it in terms of borders, right? And the idea of erasing borders. There are no more borders. Whether we're talking about the EU or whether we're talking about the Biden administration's uh, um, not failure but decision to open the borders uh, to open the borders, right? So what distinguishes? Well, in a sense, the uh, I, I don't know if this is the right way to put it, but it's not that the face is a border, but the face is what distinguishes human beings. And so to take away the human mm -hmm. face, to erase the face, right? right. This is what makes people uh, the same. The face is what tells our individuality, right? Or, or to, 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 to describe, it's, it's the, outward, um, the outward showing of our soul. Exactly. So yeah, I think that's very interesting. That, that exactly. Sovereignty, and that, Right. I mean, exactly. The face is the, the at the center of human encounter. Right. And so um, when when you are trying to annihilate that, when you're trying to erase the um, um, not only the individuality, but the inherent dignity, the human dignity uh, that yeah. everyone has, I think that the encounter then is impossible because what you're doing is you're reducing everyone either to ideology or to some sort some sort of biological or, or um, biopolitical reality, right? That you've just kind of created, again, at the service of, uh, of ideology or at the service of technology in this case, right? I mean, I, right. I think that's also part of it. Well, well, what's, I mean, what's the point? Why, why a race, why the attack on human dignity? Why the attack on the face? I mean, are we, is it a, yeah. Look, is globalism a totalitarian movement in addition to the fact that I totally agree, right? You, mm -hmm. we're, we're interconnected in, in lots of different ways. So in that way, globalism is here. But is what you're talking about, is it a, a totalitarian aspect of, of globalism? I think so. I think actually it's a kind of t t uh, 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 totalizing existence. I, I think this is, this is actually a bigger problem right now. I think it's easier for mm -hmm. us to understand what happens politically. Um, uh, mm -hmm. uh, geopolitics and all that which is very very important of course but but the other stuff i think which deals more with with the interior life of every human being is a little bit more difficult to to pinpoint because it, it precisely has that nuance but if you look really at the history of of any totalitarian regime what's always consistently attacked is the human spirit right it's the human individuality right. and human human desire to be free uh, um, so it's a different what, kind of totalitarianism what, right now, right?